So I've had this love-hate relationship with Zapier for 15 years now. Because since the moment I started my first company, I've needed to pass data from one application to another, and most of them don't talk well together. And that's the problem that Zapier solves for. It is just one major flaw, is it costs a ton of money. If we come to their product page and we take a look at their pricing model, it looks cheap at first. Oh, it doesn't cost you any money, and then it's only like $29 a month. If you pay annually, it drops down to $19 a month. But... Once these tasks start to add up really quick, now I run a boutique consulting company. It's just me. I have a handful of clients that I'm working with at any given time. And I was still doing somewhere around 10,000 tasks per month, which equated to about $1,500 a year is what I was paying. But if you're a mid-sized company or even a small company, it's not out of the realm of possibility that you might be doing 400,000 tasks a month, even a million tasks a month. And when you do that, the pricing jumps significantly. Some companies out there are paying twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars a month for what? Pass data back and forth, and that's where the hate relationship comes in. Is that it's super easy to use? It's really effective for non-tech people, but the costs are outrageous. And in my business, I'm basically doing two things. I'm building out sales pages or offer pages. I use a program called Systemi for that. It's kind of like ClickFunnels, but it's a lot cheaper. And I transfer that over to my CRM, which I use Kit. And so I'm transferring information about people who sign up for leads, who book appointments with me, who buy products or services from me. And I'm just transferring that data from one source to another. $1,500 a year for that. And so today, what I want to show you is how you can Finally, stop paying that tax to Zapier. Use something like N8N to build your workflows out and to drastically reduce your cost. Okay. Now, the first step of this, and this is the step I'm not going to do with you, is that in order for this to work and for you to get the pricing down where you need it to be, you're going to have to have a self hosted version of N8N. And before you run off, because I know people are like, oh, I can't do that, it's so super easy to do. Um, I use a uh, website called Hostinger cost me $5 a month in order to host N8N, and it took me about 10 minutes to set up. So I'm going to link in the description. If you, if you watch the rest of the video and you're like, yeah, I want to do this, I'll link in the description to the YouTube video I watched to walk me through this, and it was so simple. I can't believe I hadn't done it months ago. Okay, But once you're on your own version of N8N, now all of those tasks, those transactions back and forth, those are all included in that $5 price tag. And even if you're doing hundreds of thousands of them, say a month, you can still, all you got to do is just increase your pricing plan from, you know, $4 a month to $8 or $10 a month. So the pricing structure here is outrageously cheap. And this is the way most of my workflows go. Take information from Systemi, send it over to Kit, and then send me an email and tell me what happened. And we can make this more complicated if we want to, but I just want to show you this very simple workflow and how it works. And since this is actually actually running live, I've moved about uh, about 20% of my workflows off of Zapier at this point. We'll be finishing the rest of it over the next week or so. But this is the ones that I put together already. And I want to show you guys how easy this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new workflow. Okay. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a webhook. And webhooks, again, for non-tech people, sound really scary. It's actually super easy. So any one of the platforms that you're going to work on, this is the back office of Systemi. And I've chosen a page here that I haven't done yet. And if I open this page up, all it is is it's a wait list for a, um, a influential writing kind of training that I do twice a year. And I have this wait list up. So the last time I ran one was October. And I just put the wait list up so that anybody can sign up who wants to be notified when I do it again. Super simple. Okay. Well, this is the back office of that. And if I come into my automations, somewhere in the back office of whatever software you use, you're going to have the ability to tie in a webhook. And for me, I just click on triggers. When someone subscribes to this, what action do I want them to take? Well, we're going to have them send a webhook. And I'm going to come back here over into my N8N and under webhooks, I've got two webhooks here. I've got a test URL and I've got a production URL. And I'm going to add both of these into Systemi for this funnel. So I'm going to click that one there. I'm going to try to do this one more time. Send work webhook. And the reason I do both of these 
is because I want this to work both when I test it and when it goes into production, when I make it, when I turn it on live. Okay. So I'm going to save it. We're done. That's all we got to do. Then we come back over here into N8N and I change the HTTP method from get to post. I don't actually know why I have to do it that way. I just have to do it that way. Um, and then I want it to respond immediately and we don't need any authentication or anything else. We're done. Boom. Next thing we're going to do is just like Zapier. So one of the great things about Zapier is they've got connections to pretty much anything you could want. I've never gone to Zap and not been able to find kind of a built in node for exactly the application I wanted to work with. You can use something cheaper like make.com, but they really struggle. They don't have the same capacity as Zapier does to make those connections. So if you're not a techie person, then it gets really cumbersome and that's why I never moved my stuff over to make. Okay, gang, quick break to tell you about our sponsor for the show, Motion. Listen, if your calendar resembles a Jackson Pollock painting and you find yourself constantly falling behind schedule, you need to try Motion. It's the AI-powered super app that rebuilds your workday in real time. Motion pulls every task, every project, every meeting into one place and then prioritizes and time blocks your calendar so you always know exactly what to tackle next. It's kind of like having a project manager and a personal assistant and, I don't know, an air traffic controller all rolled into one. And the results? Well, teams tend to finish work twice as fast with 90% fewer check-ins, emails, and meetings, which, let's face it, it's something we can all afford to avoid. And because Motion predicts delays before they happen, you can course correct in days instead of hours before a deadline. Now, I've swapped my patchwork of calendars, task apps, and sticky notes for Motion, and I have never been happier. So click the link in the description to try Motion for free today and start turning chaos into calm. Now, back to the show. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another node. And this time, I'm going to search for Kit. And Kit used to be called ConvertKit. And you can see they already have a pre-built node for Kit. And when I click on it, I look at all this stuff I can do create a custom field, delete a custom field. When you go and build something out in Zapier, this is the same thing that they're doing. They're just doing it in a purely linear format and they've made it a little bit easier for people who, are, are, who don't know how to navigate it to navigate through the process. But I'm just gonna come down here to tag subscriber actions and I'm gonna click on add a tag to the subscriber, okay? Now, in this case, if there's no uh, subscriber already in uh, kit, it will automatically add that subscriber. So what I'm telling the system to do is I said, hey, once somebody signs up, I want you to send their information over to kit. And if they don't have somebody who's already, if you don't already have an email address for them, I want you to create one. And then I want you to give them a tag. So I'm going to tag subscriber. I'm going to add and the tag I'm going to select is IWI waitlist. So I've already created my tag inside of kit. So that's set up and ready to go. And the last thing we need is just an email address, which I'm going to show you how to get in just a minute. So now we come out, we're going to add one more node. Okay. And in this node, we're going to go to Gmail. And I've already connected my Gmail account, which was not that difficult. And then I'm going to come down to send an email. So we're going to send a message. Boom. And I'm going to, send to me, Jason at jasonstapleton.com. And the subject is just going to say new subscriber and we'll do IWI waitlist. And then in the HTML, I just put something in here. Like I don't need a lot of information. I just like seeing how many people are signing up from what they're signing up for. So I'll just say something like a new subscriber joined the IWI waitlist. And that's all we're going to do for that. And we're done. So now what we need to do is we need to test this workflow and see if it worked. And as I said before, we've already got our thing set up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say execute workflow. Oh, they, it's got a problem. We got to have some dummy info in here first. Okay. So we're just going to put my email address in there for the first test. And then I'm going to click execute workflow. And now it's listening. It's listening for something to happen here. Then I'm going to come in here and say test buddy at test.com and I click submit. Boom. And if we come back over to kit, you're going to see it work. And boom, if we come back in here, you'll see all of the information that is available. So these are all the field forms inside of Zapier that you could have populated. 
And the ones that it pulled over for me is going to be, there's the email address, test at test buddy. If there's no information, it says null, et cetera. Then we come to the next one here. And now what we're going to do is we need to replace this email address here with the email address that came through. And that's just a matter of scrolling down here. And this is how easy this is. Look at this. So I find test at testbuddy.com. I just drag this over. Boom. And now it's in there. And now it will work correctly the next time we run the workflow. And then if we come back to my email, you'll see my email worked. New subscriber joined the IWI waitlist. So that process worked. Now what we want to do is we're going to save. And we're going to come back and we're going to test this workflow again. Okay, but this time we're going to make sure that it populate the email correctly. So we're going to come back to N8N. We're going to go execute workflow. We're going to test a little different email address. How about test ranger at test.com? Again, we'll delete these later. We'll submit. That worked. Come back. It populates. Now let's make sure that everything worked correctly. That populated correctly. It pulled the correct email. Let's go over here and look at it. <laughs> test ranger at test.com and again sent the email to me let's go check it boom there it is new email subscriber joined the IWI waitlist so oh actually it just came in sorry that was the old one there it is new subscriber just joined the waitlist okay if you don't like having so at the bottom of this you can see how it says email was sent with N8N if you don't like that which Sometimes you don't want it. All you do is come down here to add options, go to append N8N in attribution and just turn that off. And now it won't send that anymore. But that's, that's the entire process, okay? So then when we're ready to make this live and we don't want to have to hit execute workflow every time, we just want it constantly listening for that webhook, we just go from inactive to active. And now it's just going to constantly listen for that webhook. So... That's how easy it is. So that's how I very quickly went from spending $1,500 a month using something like Zapier to spending $60 a month and building out all of my workflows inside of N8N. And we don't just have to do this. So I know some of you have much more complicated workflows. So let's say I get a couple of hundred leads a month, right? Because I'm kind of specific. Let's say you're getting a thousand leads a day. And you don't want to uh, you do this every single time because you don't want your email just flooded. Well, we don't have to do it like this. We can actually build this out in a way where you get sent a report every week or every month that itemizes all the leads that you got, itemized what they were, what they were searching for, what they ended up downloading, what they purchased. And you can combine all of that into a simple email that populates all of that data for you. And it's not complex to do. And so I just... I know that a lot of business owners have the same real love-hate relationship with Zapier, and they've always wished that there was an easier way for you to get out of, from under those high costs of doing business with them. This is the way to do it. It's so easy and simple. So go out, challenge yourself to come in here and figure out how to do this, or find yourself somebody competent who can help you do this process for you. Because even if you got to pay them five grand to do it, man, good grief, the cost savings over a mere year in some cases, will 10x or 100x what you are currently paying. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share, and I'll talk to you soon.